Praise the Lord, young people. My name is Sister Citra, coming to you tonight with uh, our ALBM Bible chat message. But before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you thanking you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for the young people and adults that are tuned in tonight uh, for uh, our program. Lord, we ask that you just uh, hide us behind the cross so that it is only you and none of us that's being seen. And we're going to be careful to give you all the praise and honor and glory for us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everyone, uh, praise the Lord. We just want to thank you for joining us tonight. First, we want to just open up and thank you all for participating in the ALBM's first uh, virtual uh, exam. So for those of you that were able to turn in your um, assignments, thank you for doing that. Um, I did get those graded and uh, got those grades back to you. I know some needed a little extra time. So if you did, uh, we gave you until Tuesday uh, because the one thing we do want you to do is, um, you know, participate in the studying of God's word. And if you need extra time to do it, then that's perfectly fine. And we'll go ahead and extend that deadline for those of you that need till Tuesday. Just go ahead and uh, direct message that to me and I'll go ahead and get that. Uh, go ahead and grade it and give you uh, those scores back to you um, before next week. Um, th but for those of you that already turned in, again, thank you so much for doing that and we appreciate it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to let you guys know is that tonight um, we'll be having the object lesson again that's taught by uh, Brother Torrance. So please uh, stay to look at that and then also the invitation that's going to be shown at the end of the program. Also, we'll be uh, reaching out to your parents, coordinating with you all for back to school supplies. Yes, it is that time. Time for you all to go back to school. But what I don't want you guys to forget is that uh, when we go back to school, we'll still be here virtually. So we'll still have classes. Um, we'll still be looking forward to have you all participate in the chat um, and we'll have your homework. Um, definitely want you to remember that even though you're going back to school, you're, you're going to need the Lord. You're going to need him. These times are really hard, really trying. Uh, we want to be praying for you all as you are taking these classes online and some of you returning to school uh, later there uh, in the, for January. So definitely uh, please continue to look at the chat. We'll be right here with you, praying for you, praying with you. And uh, an update for next week is that we will be having uh, a, another program next week. We won't start our lessons next week, but we'll be having a program so that, you know, you all will be able to see who um, the participation points that you all had. Uh, we do have some things that we're old, so we do have the um, prize will that we'll have in play next week. And then we'll also have, of course, our invitation and, and Lord willing, an object lesson. So um, now I want to go ahead and thank you again. Thank you so much. We praise the Lord for you, for your participation, and please continue to participate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything over to Brother Torrance as he does the object lesson, and then they'll conclude with the invitation. Thank you. Hello, boys and girls. This is Brother Torrance. I want to bring the word to you in a different kind of way today. Let us pray. Then, Lord, we come to you again. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to pray and seek your face, Lord. Ask the gentleman to take for this object lesson. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. What I want to give to you today, I bring to you today, is what we call an object lesson. But this, in this object lesson today, we want to discuss why did Jesus have to die? The question again is, why did Jesus have to die? In Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's Romans 6, 23. I want to try to explain it with a visual that may help, that may help this whole thing make sense of why Jesus had to die. Think about this. Jesus came to take the punishment of our sin. Any sin that you have done or would ever do, he came to take that punishment. That is what he came to do. Look at this. This is you. Look at this glass. This is you. See, look at it. Looking nice, looking good, nice and clean, just the way you should look. Just the way you were meant to be, pure. But understand, we have all done stuff that we shouldn't have not done, that we should have not done. We have all sinned in different ways. 
See, the problem is that when we sin and bring sin into our lives, it changes us. It changes who we are. And suddenly there are things in us that was not meant to be there. Things like bad attitudes, bad words, talking back, lying, cheating on stuff, stealing, talking back to your parents, whatever it may be. This is not the way you were meant to be. And God saw this and he didn't want you and me to be that way. He saw it. He wanted to make a change. Again, this is not how God intended you to be. So God had a perfect rescue plan. And that rescue plan was Jesus. Jesus was our rescue plan. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So remember, Romans 6, 23 say the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus came and he took that sin. Jesus was perfect. He came and he lived a perfect life. He was without sin. So the question would be, what would happen if Jesus took the sin of the world, of the whole world, all the sin and put it within himself? So he went to the cross and took our sin with him. He took all our sin with him. Jesus took all our sin and put it with him in himself. He went to the cross with the burden of our sin. He took it within him and within himself. First, first Corinthians 15:4. And that he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Think about this. And in Isaiah 53, 6, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. 1 John 1, 7b, in the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he was perfect and pure and blameless. And everything we needed. So with all our sins, all that's inside of us, we still have the ability to say yes. We have the ability to say yes to Jesus. We don't need sin anymore. Sin has been defeated by the power of the cross, by the power of Jesus, and by the power of his resurrection. When you say yes to Jesus and ask him to fill you with his power, it changes everything. Let me say that again. When you say yes to Jesus and ask him to fill you with his power, it changes everything. Jesus brings freedom to you. You could not have taken sin out of your own life. You could, have, you could not have removed sin by yourself. Only Jesus can do that because he died on the cross, rose again on the third day to defeat the power of sin. And that's why Jesus had to die. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you again. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this object lesson. I said you pierce the hearts, Lord, that the young people and whoever watch and understand that Jesus has died on the cross, rose again on the third day. He's paid for the sin. He's paid for the sin. All we have to do is ask Jesus to come into our heart and seek him to heaven the Father and allow him to work in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, praying good things. Amen. All right, as we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now, and uh, we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet, um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses. And uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, some people are panicking. Not everybody. <laughs> but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they're afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God 
give his son. It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. So then you may ask, well, well, why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There's a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelation 20.15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death. But, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T. But <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 is where that scripture is found. Okay? So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place. Okay? He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4. He died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's book of life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? Okay? For again, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ, to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how, that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter 1, verse 12. Okay? So we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10:13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, reach out to... You have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here at the Abundant Life Bible Mission. Uh, the leadership in this group, um, you know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return. But a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. 
Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.